But first, right now on the WHS 1119, we are following breaking news in the Newburgh neighborhood of Louisville, where a man has been shot tonight. It happened about 930 at an apartment complex on Newburgh Road near Bashford Manor Lane. As you can see from our video from our crew at the scene, police say the man was found with gunshot wounds in a common area of that apartment complex. Now he was taken to the hospital where police say he's expected to survive. Anyone who can help detectives investigating this case, they are still on the scene tonight, can also call the anonymous tip line at 574-LMPD. And hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us on the WHS 1119. I'm Doug Profit. Employees with the Oldham County School System are getting a pay raise coming this summer. The school board is calling this the largest raise they've seen in over a decade. But in what's called the state's wealthiest county, how does that stack up with JCPS? WHS 1119's Alex Dieterer and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie talked to school employees about the bump coming in their paychecks. Applause filled the room after a unanimous vote to increase Oldham County teachers' salaries. The school board approved a $2 raise to hourly staff and a 7% raise to salaried staff. I'm thankful for the raise we're getting. At the front of the room is Jeanette Hill, who is a bus driver for the county. But it's not going to be you know, sufficient for these drivers to live in this community. In her decade of driving school buses, Hill was face to face with a situation she never imagined this year. A student on her bus choked on a bottle cap and couldn't breathe. Hill did what she was trained to do. And I immediately went back and said, where's the kid? You know and just started doing the um, abdominal thrusts and I did 22 before it started to dislodge. Saving her student's life. This is something that we know that we have to do. Be prepared, you know, and um, safety first. Mm -hmm. Finish the task that's before you. Hill was one of a few bus drivers sitting at the front of the board meeting, waiting to see if their pay was going to be raised. And I've been on the board going on 16 years. This is the biggest raise we've ever gave. And while this may be the biggest raise the board has seen in years, some of the faculty we spoke with say this is a step in the right direction, but they hope to see more in the future. We get it. You're not going to just say, well, overnight we're going to get to the same pay as, say, JCPS. That's not going to happen. Before the raise, bus drivers in Oldham County, like Blaine Anderson, make around $38,000 a year. JCPS bus drivers make $55,000. A starting teacher at Oldham makes $39,000 compared to 47,000 at JCPS. We have not rewarded our teachers very well in the last 10 years and felt like 7% was definitely warranted and needed this year. Chairperson Suzanne Hunley says this is just the tip of the iceberg of what the board would like to provide teachers and staff in the coming years. The raises are going into effect July 1st. In Oldham County, Alex Dieterer with photojournalist Elijah McKenzie, the WHAS 1119 team on your side. Board Chair Suzanne Hundley says they hope the raise will keep employees within the county. She also says Oldham County is now offering free tuition to people who live outside of Oldham County but teach or work there and are hopefully approving paid maternity leave next month. Both are in hopes of increasing retention. New tonight, Louisville Metro Police are investigating after the body of a person was found in the Ohio River today. Police say a tugboat operator in the river notified them about the body southwest of downtown Louisville at about 3.40 this afternoon. Investigators are waiting for the results of an autopsy to determine the person's identity and the exact cause of death. The Jefferson County Commonwealth Attorney's Office has found two separate shootings involving Metro Police officers were justified. One happened last August right here on Frankfurt Avenue in the Clifton neighborhood when police responded to reports of a man randomly firing a gun near the area where the railroad tracks cross over the roadway. Police say at one point the man, 47-year-old James Monte, also fired at police. Officer Roberto Sedano returned fire, hitting and killing Monty. Investigators have now found his actions were justified. The second case was from September 7th at 40th and Kentucky Streets. Police say Officer Brandon Haley was conducting a traffic stop when gunfire came from a nearby home. Officer Haley was critically wounded and another officer, Colin Bellotto, returned fire. The Commonwealth Attorney's Office also found Bellotto's actions were justified. LMPD's Professional Standards Unit is still investigating both cases. A Louisville pediatrician pleading guilty today just as the federal trial against her was set to begin. We're talking about Stephanie Russell. She pleaded guilty to two charges in the attempted murder for hire of her ex-husband. 
Russell, who owned Kids Life Pediatrics in Norton Commons, was arrested in May of 2022. Federal prosecutors say she agreed to pay an undercover FBI agent $7,000 to kill her ex-husband and even left $3,500 in a specimen box outside her office for them to retrieve. Investigators also said Russell harassed and stalked her ex-husband during custody hearings between December of 2018 and August of 2019. Russell faces 15 years in prison and will be sentenced by federal judge David Hale on July 31st. The Jefferson Town Police Department is looking for this suspect in a triple shooting last week. Chief Rick Sanders of J-Town says an arrest warrant's been issued for 19-year-old Sebastian Malone in connection to the shooting on April 19th. Police say that shooting stemmed from an argument in an apartment complex on Taylorsville Road. Investigators say Malone shot three people, one of whom died at the scene. The other two victims remain at UofL Hospital, where they're considered to be stable. Police are asking anyone who knows where Malone might be to contact them. The most significant case in decades on homelessness has now reached the U.S. Supreme Court. This case centers around the town of Grants Pass, Oregon. For decades, that Oregon town has tried enforcing local encampment laws banning anyone who sleeps in public from using a blanket, pillow, or a cardboard box. Penalties include civil fines and a potential 30-day jail term for repeat offenders. A group of residents who are homeless argue the approach violates the Eighth Amendment by inflicting cruel and unusual punishment. Being homeless is very hard. It Day by day, we get harassed either by the cops or people driving by or our neighbors, they want their parks back, but there's nothing that they can do because we have a right to be homeless and live in the parks. I think that it is harmful for people to be living in public spaces, on streets and in parks, whatever bedding materials, when humans are living in those conditions, it, we think that that's not compassionate. The court is expected to rule on the case before the end of June. Now, this case being closely watched right here at home. Today's court hearing led to rallies across the country, and one happened right here in downtown Louisville today. WHS Lemon Night Team's Taylor Woods and photojournalist Addie Hill were there. Taylor, it was a big crowd downtown. What was their message? Well, Doug, organizations like the Coalition for the Homeless, Vocal KY, Black Lives Matter, the ACLU of Kentucky and others were all in attendance. And while it's not certain what the Supreme Court will rule, these organizations are calling on local, state and federal officials to advocate for affordable housing. What do we want? Affordable housing. And when do we want it? Now. More than 100 Louisvillians held housing, not handcuffed signs outside the federal building while the U.S. Supreme Court heard arguments about criminalizing homelessness. Citing and arresting those people who have nowhere else to sleep isn't a solution. It makes the problem worse. In 2021, 10,640 Louisvillians experienced homelessness alone. Monday, Louisville groups, along with local, state, and federal leaders, gathered to call for local solutions. Our people who are unhoused sleeping in the streets are worth fighting for now, so how do we fight? 25 tents were set up throughout the park with no trespassing citations. Each tent represents 24 people to show the 595 Louisvillians who go unhoused each night. Marcus Young Sr. knows that reality all too well. It's a rush to get to showers and try to get to interviews and things like that and just you know, pressing to get forward, you know. Young Senior says it would be devastating if the criminalization of homelessness becomes a law. He already has fear when he sees a police officer. First thing that crossed my mind is, oh God, is this officer going to stop me or want to harass me? Congressman Morgan McGarvey says it's about attacking the root cause of the problem. That's why also in Congress, I have co-sponsored the Housing for All Act. The Ending Homelessness Act. District 4 Councilman Jacory Author wants everyone to support an ordinance that will mandate dollars for the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, including support for an ordinance to create a right to shelter. That includes simplifying the shelter process, making sure we create a moratorium on camp clearings. And all the tents that were represented at today's rally will be donated to outreach workers for unhoused people. And if you're looking for ways to get involved, we have you linked up on our website at WHAS11.com. In studio, Taylor Woods, WHAS11 19 on your side. 
Taylor, thank you very much. The city will also soon begin randomly inspecting rental properties in Louisville as part of its new rental registry program. Now, this program is designed to guarantee safe living conditions for renters across Metro Louisville. Under the program, property owners must register all of their properties with Metro government. Codes and regulations will then randomly select properties for inspections, and they're asking for tenants to cooperate. We are here to help and not to harm. And we cannot help if we cannot fully perform our inspections. Our goal is to maintain a safe and healthy living conditions for everyone in this city. And so we hope that you will be able to be home to meet our inspectors. All rental property owners must register by June 1st or face fines. That's also when codes and regulations will start selecting the properties to inspect.